Oh my gosh. Huh. Hey guys, how's it going? Just Jeb here, and welcome back to, welcome back, I almost said to Kingdom Hearts 3. No, welcome to another segment of Just a Review. I just got back from seeing Avengers Endgame. Holy cow, what an emotional roller coaster. Oh gosh, where do I even begin with this movie? Uh, so I'm gonna split this into two videos. Um, first part's just gonna be initial thoughts, what I thought about the movie overall, and then I'm gonna go into spoiler talk because I need to talk about this guy, so oh my gosh. So, so let's get started. First off, sorry. Let's just give it up for my boy. My boy, Captain America. Okay, so. So let's get started. So, overall, the Russo brothers have done it again. I loved every movie the Russo brothers have done. Captain America, Civil War, Infinity War, and th this one, Endgame, they have done an amazing job. Those directors are great. Um, another good, uh, the composer, the guy who did the music, did another great job again. I think it was the same guy who did, um, Infinity War, which by the way guys, I'm just gonna be honest. I understood they didn't want Infinity War Part 1, Part 2, but this was basically Infinity War Part 2. Let's just be honest. Moving on, but that's another point. Um uh, the writers, the the writing was really well well done. Um it it oh gosh, I this movie was, oh, it was so good. Um so yeah, the writing was really, really well done. Scarlett Johansson blew me away. I don't normally enjoy Scarlett Johansson. She's, I used to say she was one of my favorite actresses. Nowadays, after rewatching some of the old um, Marvel movies, I just roll my eyes at some of the parts or lines she says, and it's kind of annoying. But I mean, she did really well in this movie. I'm not gonna lie. Um, everyone else did a really good job too. Um, Robert Downey Jr., always golden. Um, Chris Evans was, did really well. Chris Hemp, they all did amazing as they normally do. Um, I'm gonna be honest. Cap Captain Marvel, why? My opinion wasn't necessary. Could have had, could have had the whole movie without her. Would have been fine. Didn't even need Captain Marvel. She. But that's just me. I didn't like Captain Marvel, but... And thought she was pretty much unnecessary for this movie as well. I will say, the Captain Marvel movie itself, it was okay. But her presence and her role in this movie, no. Didn't need to happen. Un... no. But that's beside the point. Um... The music was good. Um, I noticed a lot of familiar tracks that they reused. Oh, that was really, really good. I, I enjoyed hearing those familiar tracks again, and even the new stuff was really well, too. Um, like I said, the Russo brothers, amazing job again, as always. Did a great job, and... Uh, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Cinematography, there was a lot of good moments, a lot of good, um, a lot of good shots that made me, that made my skin crawl and like gave me the chills and oh, great opening, great ending, uh, all of it was just good. And I'm about to, I'm trying to think of anything else I can talk about. Um, yeah, no, um, not that I can think of, so I think I'm about to move on to the uh, spoiler section of this m review, so if you don't want to be a part of it if you don't want to if you don't want to listen to if you don't want to hear any spoilers then I suggest you leave this video here leave it right now but uh yeah so here's the comes the spoilers guys so beginning of the movie oh broke my heart I knew that was going to happen once I saw Hawkeye in the trailers that something was going to happen to his family but like just seeing it oh hurt me I wanted to cry because 
unlike everyone else, Hawkeye is one of my favorite ones. Yes, he doesn't get a lot of screen time. He doesn't play a huge, important role. But to me, Hawkeye being just a normal family man with no superpowers really, really, it gets to me. And I really enjoyed seeing that. So when I saw his family get Thanos, it was, um, oh, that hurt. Um, movie continues on with um, I, Tony Stark and Nebula coming back to Earth when they finally make it. All the reunion was good. All the reunions were great. Uh, heard a little the first encounter with um, Cap, Steve, and um, Tony. That hurt a lot. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I wanted to cry, like, cause I was hoping, and we do get resolution from Civil War eventually, but. At the moment of that first encounter, oh, that hurt. Um, one thing I wasn't a big fan of, uh, I was really shook that things I was shook, shocked about, Thor just beheading Thanos. Oh, man, that was awesome. He, Thor was something else in this movie, especially in the beginning. But, you know, that was... um. That was really cool, but seeing them all first go after Thanos at, on the other planet, that was really cool. Seeing Thanos weaken from using the stones twice, that was, uh, that was good. That was really cool. And again, like I said, Thor cutting off his arm and then cutting off his head, I was like, bro! And then they moved five years later, like, holy cow, like, that, sh that threw me for a loop. I thought, you know, oh, they were gonna come up, they were just gonna come up. No, they just lived life for like five years. That was crazy to me that they, but I mean, again, life happens and you just gotta live with it and move on. So and a lot of people did try to move on. Like Tony, for example, he married Pepper and had a kid, which I thought was adorable. Holy cow, cutest thing I've ever seen. Uh, Um, the rest of the Avengers, Natalie, uh, Natasha, Natalie, Natasha, uh, Natasha taking care of business at the Avengers facilities and making sure things around the universe and around the globe are okay. Uh, yeah, Scott coming, Scott Lang coming back. Um, that was really cool too. Now, I was so scared that little Cassie got Thanos. Oh, that almost broke my heart. But then I saw her as a teenager, I guess. Oh, that made me so happy because I was about to cry if Cassie got Thanos. But thankfully, she didn't get Thanos. That was great. And then the whole time heist thing, the time traveling aspect of it. I mean, it was cool and it was really cool getting to re re see some of the my favorite moments again. And But... When you bring time travel into something, it's it's not going to go well. And I, after watching it, me and my friend have talked about it. A lot of things we're already talking about were, like, what's going to happen with Loki now? Because in 2012, after the Battle of New York, Loki escaped, even though... It, oh. <sighs> but other than that, it was a really cool segment. Um... Thanos from the past coming to the future was really cool, realizing that yes, he succeeded, but he also failed at the same time was, that, that was really, really cool, and uh, as cool as the moment was, I will say that as awesome and epic as that section was, I can't really say, uh, no, there was one favorite part from the whole time heist and going back in time getting the stones. When Tony and Steve go to the 1970s and, uh, get the things they needed. The interaction between Howard and Tony, mm, my heart. Because yeah, throughout the whole series, like Tony really didn't like his father and he despised him, but, and I think after finding out what happened in Civil War, uh, Tony really reevaluated his true feelings for his father. And that was just really cool getting to see um, how he interacted and how thankful that he was for his father and for the things he'd done. Um, 
Yeah, not much to say about the middle segment, the middle time heist. I'm gonna because that's what Scott Lane called it, but um. Yeah, like I said, when you bring time travel into it, it's it gets messy sometimes, and I don't know what's gonna happen with the whole Loki thing, but I was I will say the nice little Easter egg they did was um in the again the New York segment during the bat hour after the Battle of New York when they're trying to get the scepter and the uh, tesseract. When Captain America said Hail Hydra, that was right from the comic books, and I remember when that was so big and controversial. So that was that was really, really, really cool. Um, hmm, what else? Nothing much about the time heist again, other than it was really cool seeing reliving my moment, the, m those cool moments again, like getting to see uh, the Avengers assemble around in a circle was really cool, and like in the first Avengers movie and. Uh, oh, I was, during the, there was an elevator scene at the, towards the end of the New York segment, and I was about to say, oh, is there about to be another elevator showdown, like in Captain America Winter Soldier? Sadly, there wasn't, but again, I'll take the little Easter egg from the comics over an, or another rehash of the um, fight in the elevator with Captain America and all the Hydra agents. Uh... Getting to see the moment from Guardians of the Galaxy, Peter Quill singing and dancing, that was really cool. Uh, mm, from Thor the Dark World, Thor getting his, um, getting a reunion with his mom, which that's something I didn't talk about. Thor, Thor, come on. And I mean, I get it, Thor was defeated, he thought he failed, so he let himself go, and he but it wasn't Thor. And again, they could have done something way better than just have Thor become a lazy bum and a drunk. But, you know, that's that. But when he had his moment with his mom, that was really, really cool. See, and when she, finding out that he was still worthy after he um, brought some in Mjolnir, 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 his hammer, that was really, really cool too. And also, um, edit this to the time heist. Getting to see um, when Hawkeye and uh, Natasha were Black Widow going after the um, Soul Stone. Oh, that broke me. Man, that was that was rough. Like I knew one of them was going to have to sacrifice themselves, and I knew whichever one was, I was going to be hurt. Looking back at again, Black Widow is not one of my favorites, so I mean, but it still hurt because these were these were characters I grew up with. These were characters that I have watched since the beginning in 2008. Now I haven't seen every movie in theaters because um, I do have a life, but I've seen it, most of them in theaters, and man, it was that hurt like. I think if Hawkeye was the one who sacrificed himself, that would have hurt a lot more. But the fact that it was Black Widow, again, that still hurt. But it wasn't as bad as what it would have been if it was Hawkeye. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's gonna be uh, for the middle section, the time highs. But oh my gosh, the ending in the final battle. Oh, where do I begin? Hulk, Hulk bringing everyone back with, his, with the snap. That was really cool and Getting to, uh, getting, uh, man, Thanos, uh, destroying the Avengers facility, and, oh, it was awesome. Uh, what else? Um, Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America going three on one against Thanos. Oh, it was so great. And then, um. Finding out that Captain America could wield Thor's hammer? We knew that from Age of Ultron. Like, that hammer slightly moved. And the fact that they were planning that or they were preparing for that at, at Age of Ultron, bro, that was awesome. Oh, that was so great. My boy. Captain America. Mm. Anywho. Um, that was really, really, really cool. And, Again, those three taking on Thanos was great, and then, oh, Thanos summoning his army, and it looked like all was lost, all was dire, it was no hope. 
And then the moment that made the whole theater clap, applaud, me be super loud talking in my normal loud voice, Sam calling on the radio for Cap, if that Cap could hear him, and having the Avenger army from the Guardians of the Galaxy, all of Wakanda, all of the um, sorcerers from Doctor Strange, all of, everyone just coming together. Like, we thought Infinity War was great. Nah, man. This was the moment everyone came together and it was so great. It was epic. Oh, like I said, my whole, we were shouting, we were cheering, we were, oh, it was amazing. Getting to see all of, oh, and then the, the battle itself was great. Getting to see all the characters interact off each other because a lot of the interactions, and that's what I loved about Infinity War and this one is that we saw characters interact with each other that we wouldn't normally see interact. Like, one of my favorite parts was Rhodey and, uh... Rhodey and, uh... Um, Nebula. That reaction was something we haven't seen. The final battle, it was... Oh my gosh! And again, Captain America saying, Avengers Assemble. Because this was the first time in the entire MCU that, ah, oh, it was amazing. It was the first time that has ever been said. It was almost said once at the end of Age of Ultron, but didn't really get a cut right before he said a symbol. But this was the moment they said it for the first time. They charged, oh, it was awesome. Characters interacting with each other. It was so great. Doctor Strange and Doc... Tony Stark interacting with each other and um, the fight with the armies and the, oh, it was just, that was a final battle. And I cannot wait. Oh man, this year has just been a year for finales for me and whatnot. Like there was Kingdom Hearts 3, there's going to be Game of Thrones, there's um this and oh, it was awesome. So, one, and uh, one part, again, Captain Marvel really didn't... I mean, she had cool moments. I'm not going to lie about that. Like, when she went one-on-one -on -one against Thanos, that was really cool. But, I mean, that was really all she was there for. Sorry, I'm... The more I see of Captain Marvel and, you know... I just, I just don't like Captain Marvel, guys. I'm sorry. But... And another thing was when all the female... I will say, what... What this movie did better than what all the other movies tried, or at least in Infinity War they tried, and I think those were the only two movies that tried this, but like in Infinity War it was all the female warriors, and it was like, oh, I forget, um, the one from Black Panther, I forget her name, but it's the one who uses the spear. It was her, Natasha, Black Widow, and Scarlet Witch, um, fighting against one of Thanos' um, elite, um, commanders of the army or something and that was okay but I will say this one was a lot cooler because I mean I'm seeing this I'm, this one was cooler having all the female characters not just a few of them but all of them getting together and um fighting I'm not a big fan of it because I feel like in a lot of superhero movies nowadays especially when they do superhero team-ups with a lot of lead females you gotta get, you gotta have that one moment with all the females, you know, make sure just to show them that they can stand on their own too. And I mean, I'm just like, we know they can take care of themselves and stand on their own. I've seen these characters fight. I don't need all of them together to fight, you know? But again, I will say this movie did it a lot better than what other movies have tried to do. And then, um... The moment with Peter Quill and um, past Gamora because oh, that was great. And apparently something, I don't know what happened to Gamora after that moment, or maybe it was after the um, all the female heroes getting together, but something happened to her. Then um, again, it was one last standoff between Thor, Iron Man, and Tony, trying to keep the gauntlet away from Thanos, and it was them just making, trying not to, 
let Thanos get it, and oh, it was great, it was intense, and you know, they almost failed, Thanos almost snaps, and Iron Man comes in, comes in after looking at Doctor Strange, and Doctor Strange going once, and oh, it was so great, and it was just, oh, and then Iron Man, mm, the moment Iron Man snapped, like that moment, I am inevitable. I am Iron Man. And he's, oh, that moment when, I called that, by the way. I knew that, I thought Tony was going to use the actual gauntlet, but he used the stones. The point was, I knew he was going to use the stones. I knew Tony was going to be the one to set things right. Because Doctor Strange asked for him to be spared at an Infinity War, and I, I knew it. And then we get the ending. Oh, that broke me. Um, me talking to some friends about it, some of my friends were like, oh yeah, that was the ending he deserved. And other friends were like, that wasn't the, it was a good ending for him, but he shouldn't have gotten that. He deserved more. And I don't know where I stand. I say it's a fitting end. Because I, back in 2008, Iron Man started this journey. 2008, Iron Man started the MCU and it was so good. It was great. It was what it, it was a new beginning for superhero movies and it was awesome. And to have Iron Man be the one to snap Thanos' army, Thanos' army disappearing, not just his army, not just his army, but Thanos sitting down realizing that he lost. And like, that's, I liked Thanos in this one was villainous. He was actually evil. His purposes was evil. Infinity War, he was just trying to help. And even though it was wrong, he was still just trying. This one, when he realizes that no one would be grateful and he just wanted to basically start the universe over, <clears throat> I loved his motives in this one way better, too. To just erase... Erase, universe, erase the universe to a single atom and recreate creation. Oh, that was awesome, I thought. And it was great. Um, but yeah, Thanos, or Tony snapping and just Thanos sitting down and realizing he lost as he fades away. Oh, that was so beautiful. That was great. This was, oh, it was, a, it was awesome, guys. I mean... Then the last moments with Tony and everyone, and the one where Peter breaking down and crying, and Pepper telling Tony, you can rest now, and my heart. Then Tony's funeral, getting to see everyone, and I loved what they did. They had everyone together where they were. You had all the original Avengers with on their side, and then you had Peter and his family on the other side, and then you pan over, and it's the Guardians of the Galaxy, and then you, the camera pans over again, and you see it's uh, Ant-Man and his crew, and then the camera pans over again, and you see the kid from Iron Man 3 makes an appearance too, and that to me was really, really cool. I didn't even recognize it. One of my friends who already saw the movie was like, that's the kid from Iron Man 3, and I'm like, oh, this makes the scene so much more beautiful, but he was there, and you know, and just seeing, and then all the sidekicks were in their own little part, and Captain Marvel on the steps, but then seeing Nick Fury. Mm. Uh, and then Steve going back into the quantum time traveling thing to put the stones back so there wouldn't be any more other branches, and he went back. He went back to Peggy and he got that dance with her and they started a family. That was, that was the ending Cap needed. Oh, and it was beautiful and passing down the mantle from the shield from himself to the Falcon. Now the Falcon's gonna be. Oh. It was beautiful, guys. This movie was an emotional roller coaster and I wouldn't have had it any other way it it was an ending that I've always wanted for this series 
I love finales. I love ending them. Even when the credits were rolling and like they were showing scenes from the entire MCU and when they were showing characters, they showed characters, not scenes from this movie, but the entire MCU and the original six Avengers showing their their big moments and then their little signet. Oh, that was so cool. This movie didn't have a post credit scene and I didn't want it, but they had a sound that was nostalgia and it was Tony hammering, making his suit from Iron Man 1. And, mm. So guys, I'm going to end this review by saying this. It, if I were to, I don't even know how I would grade this movie. A 90, 9 out of 10, an 8, 8 out of 10. It was a great movie, guys. I loved it. Fantastic. I was blown away by it. It made my, it made me cry. Well, not really cry, but I was crying inside. Yeah, no tears. Ran. There were moments that I really did on, like Tony's death. Oh, dead. But it was awesome, guys. And this, I've been a fan of this series since the beginning, since Iron Man. And I didn't realize that the, like, so I started with Iron Man in 2008, and I think I was, I was 12 or 13 when the first Iron Man came out. So getting to be a part of this journey for that long, seeing these characters develop, seeing these characters um, grow, seeing the interactions between them. I honestly didn't know this was a cinematic universe until the Avengers came out. Like, because I started with Iron Man in 08. I didn't see The Incredible Hulk. I didn't see Thor. I didn't see Captain America. And not until Captain America came out on DVD. Then I saw the little teaser at the end of Captain America, the first Avenger for the Avengers. And I was like, oh crap, I need to watch these other movies. So I watched these other movies. And as the series kept going and going and going, I was like, this is really cool. This is great. Nothing's ever happened like this. And, and, the, and I was getting to the point where I love these movies and I still, all the movies that came out and I'm excited for what's going to happen in the future. Not sure if I'll watch all the movies. I'll stick around for my favorites, but I was kind of starting to get burned out. But this was the ending that needed to happen for this franchise, or at least this saga, the Infinity Saga. But it was great, guys. I loved it. 10 out of 10. 9 out of 10, because Fat Thor was in it. But it was fantastic, guys. Y'all should definitely go see it. All right. Now I'm going to try not to cry because that was an emotional roller coaster. Deuces and God bless.